I'm sorry. I'm calling Dr. Grenigan. You want it in surgery. Come on, let me take you home. Greg, I, I'd like to stay here for a little while. All right. I'll wait for you outside. I'd like to be alone. And please, this tomb is never to be locked. It's never to be locked, do you understand? Never.
really don't think these daily visits here are doing you any good. I can't help it, Greg. You're wrong. You can't help it. You've got to try, though. She warned me about my fast driving, and she's the one that's had to suffer because of it. Fred, the accident wasn't your fault. Now, stop blaming yourself. Greg, she said she'd come back. How? I don't know. I have no she idea. She promised she'd come back. I know, I know. Look, let's, uh, let's get some lunch. I have an idea. I've got a couple of tickets to the place tonight. Now, maybe you'd like to join me. Not now, Greg. Thanks. All right. baby. Say, Jim, do you remember a while back you told me about this woman you know who conducts seances? Ah, uh, you mean Katrina. Yeah, she's something else. Yeah, well, I mean, can she really make contact to the dead? Well, she hasn't had any complaints from any of her customers yet. I see. Yeah, well, Jim, is it possible for you to arrange for me to go to one of these things? Sure. All right, I'll set it up right away. Now, please. You will extend your hands, palms down on the table before you, being sure your little fingers are touching those of the person on either side of you. And now, dear friends, we shall try to communicate with the spirit world. Please close your eyes and concentrate. Spirits of the night, Spirits of the dark, hear me. If you are present, hear me. Mm. <gasps> oh, wait. I think... Yes. There is a spirit present. It begins to reveal itself to me. Young man, you, who are sitting on my right. Me? Yes. I have contacted your grandmother. My grandmother? But, but, but one of them is still living. It is not the one I have contacted. Oh, God. Shh. Quiet. Do you wish to speak with her? No, no, no. Uh... Just tell her I said hello. That spirit is gone. Uh, 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 yes, I feel the presence of yet another spirit. The recently departed wife of the gentleman. The first gentleman seated on my left. Laura, I'm sure your husband, Fred, is yearning to hear your voice. Laura, speak. Speak to your husband. Let him hear the sweet sound of your voice again.
just can't believe that something like this is possible. Well, then let's forget it. Oh, wait. Can I see the woman? Sure. When would you like to see it? How about tonight? Fine. I'll tell you what, you be at this address around midnight. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Hello, I'm Fred Saunders. Oh, hello, Mr. Saunders. I'm so happy you could come. Are you the gentleman whose wife returned back to him? Yes, after 30 years. 30 long years, and she came back to me, thanks to these good gentlemen here in the society. The society? Yes, the Society of the Dead. They brought her back to me. Would you like to meet her? Yes, I certainly would. Very well. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> still hear it. And you used to kid me about dating a palm reader. Here you are with the phony seances, hooded men the whole bit. Oh, come on, Fred, snap out of it. Listen, I'm asking you as an old friend, but as your doctor, I'm telling you, you've got to pull yourself together. Look at you, you're a mess. Do you honestly believe Laura would want you to carry on like this? When she comes back? Oh, damn it, Fred, will you stop that? People don't come back from the dead. No matter how hard you're trying to preserve her body, it won't help. I realize what you're going through. But you've just got to accept the fact that she's gone. Laura is dead. But you're young, Fred, and you're alive. I'm sure that someday, you'll find someone who'll make you just as happy as Laura did. But in the meantime, for God's sake, let Laura rest in peace. What do you say? I know. How about coming up to my place for dinner tonight? I just fired my cook, so I'll have to play chef now. That ought to be good for a laugh. What do you say? Laura's coming back to me, Greg. I don't know how or when, but... She is coming back to me. Good morning. Morning, Sandy. Coffee? Yeah, please. What's that? Something to read with your coffee. I've been laughing my head off at some of the ads in this thing. If you don't shock easily, you might enjoy it. Well, I'll try not to be shocked. Yes, I saw your ad in the paper about reincarnation and... Tonight? Why, well, I think so. Fine, I'll meet you there around 11 o'clock. Oh, just ask for Mr. Saunders. Thank you. And no 
your last name? You call me Tana, and I'll call you Fred. All right. I had to do a bit of research on you. Oh, I am very sorry. I see that you have lost your wife recently. Yes, Laura's the reason I'm interested in reincarnation, or, or whatever you call it, to enable me to, to... To see her again? To be able to hold her and touch her? Yes, exactly. And you found that this couldn't be achieved by false spiritualists who conduct phony seances, correct? My research, remember? No, Mr. Sanders. I mean Fred. There is only one person in the entire world who has the power to make the body of your wife live and breathe again. You mean you're representing someone who claims to be able to bring the dead back to life? He not only claims to do it, he does it. And that's only a portion of what this man can do. Quite his genius Tana, can... Tana, I've had my fill of people who claim. You don't have to take my word for it. Why not see for yourself? Then how do I do that? Simple. Meet me here tomorrow night at the same time. And I'll take you to this man. The only man who can see to it that your wife keeps that promise she made to you on her deathbed. Demonstrations always the same? Each one varies. And what's in store for us tonight? Oddly enough, not even I know. And that's quite unusual because, well, you see, the doctor and I are quite close. I see. And you call him doctor? Yes. Doctor of brilliance. The genius of all ages. The man who has conquered death the most powerful man on earth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In a few moments, you will see a demonstration the likes of which I can assure you, you have never seen before. A demonstration of supernatural powers which I have perfected that will amaze you beyond your wildest expectations. But because of the nature of this demonstration, I must ask all of you present to take an oath of silence. I must ask you all to swear never to reveal what you shall see here tonight. Now, will you please rise? Now, extend your arms, lift your heads high, and close your eyes. Repeat after me. I swear that I shall reveal to no one... I swear that I shall reveal to no one... ...what I am about to witness. What I am about to witness. And if I break this solemn oath, 
and, and if, if I, I break, break this solemn oath, may all those I love and cherish, may, may all those I love and cherish, be cursed with endless sufferings, be cursed with endless suffering, and may their souls, and may their souls, be damned forever. Be damned forever. Now please be seated. And now for our demonstration. You see here what was only yesterday, a living, breathing mortal. A beautiful young girl with exquisite features and a body like a goddess. But the poor thing is dead. Yes, she is dead. And this is a fact I would like to prove before going any further in my demonstration, just in case anyone might have any doubts about the condition of this lovely creature you see here before you. May I ask for a volunteer to come up here and see for yourself that there is no life left in this lovely creature? A volunteer, please. Sure, I'll volunteer. Excellent. Would you come up here, please? Now, would you listen to see if there is any heartbeat? Oh, why, certainly. She's dead, all right. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't hear a thing. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this woman had everything a girl would want. But her young life was snuffed out by a jealous lover. Her soul has gone into another realm, but her body lies here, about to waste away unless... Now, this girl, unlike our gorgeous creature here, is neither dead nor beautiful. She's the unfortunate victim of an explosion in a chemical factory, which has left her entire face and body a mass of horrible scars and burns. Ladies and gentlemen, must she be condemned to spend the rest of her days with a face so grotesque? The answer is no. Through selective reincarnation, she will toss off this mangled body, and her soul will assume this beautiful one here. But first, as she requested, she must, as we call it, die. And so we shall gladly fulfill her request. And in so doing, why not be entertaining at the same time? Being an amateur magician, I thought I might delight you nice people by performing the old Saw the Girl in Half trick. Oh, I almost forgot. Of course, my version of this old trick is that I actually do Saw the Girl in Half. Shall we, Thor? has been fulfilled. Her soul no longer has to be trapped in such a hideous body. And where is her soul? Watch as I summon it before your very eyes. But that's murder. Is it? A silly girl wanted to die. She didn't want to live in that body of hers. 
All he's doing is obliging her. Now, please, be absolutely silent and watch. Behold her soul, a beautiful soul about to enter a body deserving of it. Watch as you shall see the dead rise, coming back to life through selective reincarnation. of you who might want to leave your present bodies and reincarnate into a new one, don't worry. It needn't be done in the unpleasant manner you just saw here. I was just being theatrical. And now this young lady, what shall we call her? She's like a goddess of beauty. Ah, yes, Venus. Venus shall be her name. And now Venus and I shall be happy to answer any of your questions. If what I saw really happened, and I still say it's murder. Oh, it really happened. But whether it was murder or not, why well, this is a theater, not a courtroom. But can't you just see your wife coming back to life like this Venus just did? Think of it, Fred. Wouldn't that be worth more to you than anything else? Yes. Yes, it would. Good evening. And you must be Mr. Saunders. I hope you enjoyed our demonstration. He said it was murder. Murder? Such an ugly word, Mr. Saunders. Well, what would you call it, Doctor? A means to an end. You've seen the marvelous results. Isn't she beautiful? And it is results we're after, isn't it, Mr. Saunders? Could you bring anyone back from the dead? Could anyone mean your wife? Do you want me to try for you? No, thank you. Well, if you should change your mind, I'll always be at your service. It was a pleasure meeting you. Now, if you'll excuse me. We'll see you later. I don't know, my dear. I have all those guests to attend to. You mean one guest, don't you? Mm -hmm. I should have known that you would want to attend to her. Can you blame me? She's so beautiful and so... so young. Excuse me. Oh, listen. I think you're super. Thank you. And what can I do for you? Are you kidding? See, I don't care if you cut me into tiny bits. But you've just got to put my soul into a bod like that.
Mr. Saunders. Are you all right, sir? Yes. You still want me to keep the tomb unlocked? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here's the report you wanted. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Fred. I know I'm breaking the boss secretary barrier, but I was just wondering. My date called and he had to break our date for the theater tonight. And I hate to waste these two tickets. Would you like to go? Oh, that sounds good, Sandy. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you what, since you're providing the tickets, uh, I'll take you to dinner, okay? That's fair enough. Fred. Fred. I'll come back to you, Fred. I promise. Sandy, look, uh, about tonight, uh, I'm sorry, I had made other plans. Will you give me a rain check? Sure, I understand. Fred Saunders. Yes, I have changed my mind. I've decided to see the doctor after all. to buy things like that for me? Vaguely. Sorry to have distracted you. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> oh, don't stop now, my dear. Never stop at the crucial moment. Mr. Saunders, yes. Show him into the study. I have an appointment, but I won't be long. Ah, I won't be long. <laughs> exquisite. Simply exquisite. Tell me, are you happy with your new body? Very happy. And are you grateful to your doctor? Very grateful. How grateful? Very grateful. I'll be back shortly to examine the extent of such gratitude. Mr. Saunders, nice seeing you again, sir. Sorry to have kept you waiting. That's all right. Ah. Thank you. I think you'll find this to your liking. It's all right, Thor. There's nothing to worry about. I'm quite safe with Mr. Saunders. He's a bit overprotective of me, but I'm glad he is. 
Once in Africa, he discouraged a young lion from attacking me. His intervention almost cost him an eye. Oh, if you think Thor looks bad, you should see the young lion. <laughs> Brave man. Many years ago in Saudi Arabia, he chose to have his tongue ripped out rather than reveal my whereabouts to an irate sheik. Ah, yes, Thor is a brave man. Now, what should we drink to, Mr. Saunders? Everlasting life, perhaps? And now, tell me why you changed your mind. You really are exquisite. I'm sure you'll be able to please him. I'll do my best. Good. I always did my best. Yes, but now it's my turn. Yes, it's your turn. I brought you something which will make you more desirable. That? Yes. This! Perhaps your wife who must have loved you very much, meant that she would return to you possibly by means of you reliving your memories of her or seeing things that reminded you of her. No, uh, she said that she would come back. Mr. Saunders, if by she you mean both your wife's body and soul together, that's impossible, even for me. It's too late. Her soul has already gone into another dimension. But I can bring life back to your wife's body, if you'd be interested in that. Simply by infusing a soul which has recently left its own body. Like the demonstration you saw last night. Yeah, but if my wife had a strange soul in her body, wouldn't she be different than how I knew her before? Well, of course, she wouldn't have all the same traits, but she would retain some of them. Because the new soul would be influenced by the physical habits and patterns the body has acquired through its many years of life. For example, if it was your wife's habit to kiss you first thing in the morning, well, I'm sure the new soul would obey this rather charming habit. I see. All right, then do it. Bring life back to her body. First, there is the matter of a fee. Well, you name it. Fifty thousand dollars in cash in advance. I can arrange that. Good. More cognac. Uh, doctor, I was wondering, this ability of yours, this, this power, this formula, I mean, how? How do I do it? <laughs> I was afraid you'd never ask. Well, to explain it properly, and I must admit I enjoy telling the story, we have to go back over a thousand years. That's right, Mr. Saunders. A thousand years. Of course, I was residing at a different address then. <laughs> and residing in a different body. One not nearly as nice as the one I have now. But to continue. After experimenting for half a lifetime, I found what I believed to be the correct formula needed to create the miracle of all time. Yes, while others tried ways to perpetuate their bodies, I had tried to develop a way to keep the soul on Earth for as long as it wanted, to be able to choose its own body for reincarnation at any time and any place. But, time was running out. I had little life left in my old body. I needed a nice, young, healthy body in which to place my soon departing soul. I had no other choice but to try to put my soul into the body of my young apprentice. Imagine my royal soul going into this peasant's body. But this was no time to make class distinctions. No, it was time to challenge the impossible. But first, I had to convince my young serf that it was permissible for him to share wine with a member of the ruling class. 
As I think of it, it's amazing how greatly he resembled my present Bobby. Not nearly as polished, of course. And so we drank a toast to the success of the greatest experiment the world had ever known. <laughs> Naturally, I didn't swallow a drop of the wine, not after what I put into it. <laughs> but the thirsty young serf, not used to having such quality beverages, took a long, healthy draught, then dropped over dead from poisoning. <laughs> oh, well. And so I had committed my first of many, many, what you would call murders. After all, I was determined to keep my soul on Earth. But if I was going to perform this neat little trick, I realized I'd better do it quickly. You see, the life was oozing out of my tired old body. If my formula did not work now, it would be too late to try again. As I expected, the final pain came and my old body died. But a moment later, thanks to my formula, my soul left that old body and entered the body of the young serf. And so life returned to the once dead young man. Life provided by my soul. It had worked. I had found the secret of selective reincarnation. I had conquered death. And though I was in the body of a mere serf, I had all I needed to be an emperor. Namely, that precious vial containing my special formula. I also took my royal cloak. <laughs> you see, I wouldn't have felt dressed without it. So, I went out into the world, equipped with the greatest power on Earth, available for all who might need it. It was comforting to know that whenever my body wore out, I could always reincarnate my soul into another one. When the serf's body finally did wear out, I found myself in the rather embarrassing predicament where the only body at my disposal was that of a beautiful woman. <laughs> I had to kill the poor thing. And once again, my formula worked. I must admit, having my soul in the body of a female proved to be quite an experience. <laughs> However, I was fortunate enough to quickly find a healthy young male body. My soul was a bit more comfortable there. I went on to play countless other roles in order to keep my soul alive. And to do this, I had to use bodies of all sizes and shapes. Why, I even knew what it was like to be a child again. <laughs> now that was fun. And I experienced membership in races other than my own. So I really did learn how it felt to be of a different color. Marvelous experiences down through the ages to the present day. Keeping my formula ever handy to benefit not only myself, but of course, my fellow man. And thanks to my special talent, I have seen more, done more, and experienced more than any soul in history. I've had riches, I've had power. Power enough to rule the world if I wanted to. Instead, I prefer to spend my time in more pleasurable pursuits. Ah, which reminds me, I have someone waiting. Now is for me to make the necessary preparations and for you to bring the money. I'll call you as soon as I'm ready. Good night, Mr. Saunders. Good night, Doctor.
Wake up, my dear. Wake up. Washington? Sure, let me tell him that you're here. There he is. Sandy, hi, Greg. Cancel the porter appointment, will you? I uh, dropped by to invite you to my place for dinner tonight. I'm breaking in a new cook, and I need a guinea pig. Now, how about it? No, I'm sorry. Good, I've got a guinea pig. Now, what about you, lovely one? I can call Maria and have her thawed another steak. Greg, I'm sorry. Not tonight, huh? Now, what's wrong with him? I don't know. We had arrangements to go to the theater tonight, and then he got a phone call. <laughs> I just don't know. Sandy, I'm, uh, I'm worried about that guy. So am I. You do care for him, don't you? I'm afraid so. Oh, that's good. Now, don't you give up the ship. I think you're just what this doctor ordered. Well, thank you, doctor. 50,000. Not really that much, considering the service I'm about to perform. Shall we go to my private theater? Theater? Why? <laughs> yes, I don't know what gets into me, but I have this compulsion to do everything uh, theatrically. You see, this is because in the 18th century, I occupied the body of a wonderfully talented but frustrated actor. I've been pretty much the ham ever since. Come, Mr. Saunders, the show must go on. Doctor, there's something I must know before you go ahead with this. And what is that, Mr. Saunders? Well, you're going to need a soul for my wife's body. Now, whose soul? Now, now, we agreed that didn't really matter, didn't we? But I must know. Very well. No! Uh, please don't interfere, Mr. Saunders. Just relax and enjoy the show. No, wait! Uh, but this is murder! That ugly word again. No! You see, you made our knife thrower miss. Doctor, I can't permit this! Would you rather have Thor throw the next knife at you, Mr. Saunders? I'm sure he couldn't miss at this close range. Oh, don't feel so badly, Mr. Saunders. It was over in a second. Who knows? If we allowed nature to take its course, Tana might have lived to be very, very old. And her ego never would have permitted her to bear such a catastrophe. Or she might have contracted a lingering illness. You see, this way, very little suffering. And as far as her soul is concerned, well, your wife could do far worse. Ah, yes. Tana has a fine soul. <laughs> Stop your wife's tomb. Oh, she's lovely. I can see why you want her back. And in a few moments, Mr. Saunders, you'll be holding her in your arms again. Enter that body. Enter that body. I command you, enter that body. I don't understand. This has never happened before. Let Laura rest in peace. For God's sake, let Laura rest in peace. I'm glad. In a way, I'm glad. Now, let's go, Doctor. For some strange reason, Laura's body rejected Thomas' soul. Now, whatever the reason was, I want you to forget it. Forget that I suggested such a thing. You could 
Keep your fee and leave well enough alone. I prefer not to see you again, Doctor, under any conditions. You don't believe me, do you? You think I imagine the whole thing, don't you? No, unfortunately, I do believe you. Not even your imagination could dream up a story like that. Greg, what do I do now? You're the illegal lawyer, Fred. You ought to know the answer to that. You tell the police. Police? What else? This madman committed a murder right before your eyes. Yeah, and I'm his accomplice. Oh, don't be stupid. You tried to stop him, didn't you? You said he threatened your own life if you tried to interfere, right? Yes, of course. I didn't want to see Tana die, but I did want it to work. So you see, in here, I am his accomplice. Well, that's something you have to work out for yourself, isn't it? In the meantime, we'd better tell the police before the so-called doctor murders anybody else. Yeah, they'd never believe us. They'll believe the dead body. If they can find it, I'm sure this madman's taking care of that little item. And nevertheless, we should still tell the police. No, I want to wait before we tell wait them. Wait for what? For this not to kill a few more people? Greg, I don't want to tell them now. I want to wait. Now, will you get off it? Sit down and relax, Fred. I'll get you something for your nerves. I'll come back to you. I Stop and help the poor dear, don't you? Here, my dear, let me help you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, mister. Awful place to have a flat tire. and keep looking. I mustn't fail. What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way. Make me. I'll cool it. I'm warning you, get out of my way. Listen, weirdo, you better split where you got a chance.
I command you, enter that body. Enter that body. I command you, enter that body. soul of mine even affects my blood. It's only fitting, though. A rare infection for a rare mortal, eh, Thor? Oh. This infection won't stop, but neither will I. Not until I successfully put a soul in that woman's body. <laughs> It's giving me the creeps. Well, no, I don't want to turn it off. I want to see how it ends. Honey, honey, wake up. Can't you come over? Oh, oh my God. Huh? Oh, well, it's the girl in the picture. She's all alone. And she hears footsteps. Honey, honey, now I hear footsteps, just like in the movie. Can't you please come over? Please, I think somebody's coming toward my apartment. I can't lock it, it's busted. Just like the girl in the movie. Oh my God, look what's at her door. Honey. Honey, now somebody's at my door. Somebody's coming in my apartment. From now on, please see to it that it remains locked. Don't worry, Mr. Saunders. I've got the only key. Thank you. You feel better now? Much better. Good. Fred? You want some more advice? I'm listening. Go back to your office. Whisk that gorgeous secretary of yours off to lunch or dinner. The whole works. Enjoy yourself. Get your mind off of this. OK? OK. You're the doctor.
it's good to be laughing again, Sandy. I have you to thank for that. Well, I was just doing my job, boss. Now, how would you like a cup of coffee or maybe a nightcap? Love one. Young lady, would you mind staying in that phone booth for just one moment? I'd like to talk to you. Huh? Who's this? Weirdo. what you were looking for, my dear. She's dead than Tana did when she was alive. Locked. Hello, Doctor. I thought it was you. Well, if it isn't my old friend, Franz. I see that the body I got you is holding up nicely. Nicely? Well, it does look a bit uncomfortable. Mm. But you get what you pay for, Franz. However, when you can afford a new one, you know where to come. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, would, uh, would this help? How can such a lovely body have such an uncooperative soul? <sighs> Scary movie we saw tonight, wasn't it? Uh-huh. You know, I could be in those movies, Alice. I can be pretty scary myself. <laughs> oh, Harry, you couldn't scare a fly. Oh, yeah? Watch this. <laughs> oh, Harry! All right, all right, let me try this. <laughs> See? See, I told you I could be in those movies. I'm just as scary as those guys that play the monsters. <laughs> Must really be getting good. You screamed that time, I didn't even try to scare you. Amateur. <laughs> Young lady, I'll show you how a professional frightens the girls. Enter that body. I command you, enter that body. One clue as to why I'm failing. <laughs>
still where I left you. My dear, do you realize you haven't left this room in almost two weeks? Now leave me alone, please. Now, where is that candle you had in here? Ah. Oh, no, don't light it. But how else will I be able to see what I'm doing? Never have to cry. Sounds good, Greg. I'm sure Sandy loved it. Wait a minute. Here she is. I'll ask her. Darling, it's Greg. He wants to have us over for dinner. What if he's not cooking? I'd love it. <laughs> You're on, partner. I'll see you. What's that? There's somebody left in front of your office door. It's addressed to you. Shall I open it? Well, that's one way to find out what's in it. <laughs> Still trying. Enter that body. I command you, enter that body. I command you, enter that body. Enter that body. so smug and secure in your coldness and lifelessness, but I swear to you, I am succeeding. Greg, this maniac's not going to give up until he succeeds. You'd better have her body removed from this place and have her put into a grave. Yeah, you're right. So that's it. I need a soul as strong as Laura's soul. And when I find it, must be taken out of its body gently. No violence. Oh! So little time left. I must find a soul strong enough to enter Laura's body. Show me the soul. The soul strong enough to enter that woman's body. Show me. Show me. Ah, I think. Yes, I think I see it. Yes, there it is. The face of the soul I need. And what a lovely face. Now to find my car. <laughs> You know, I forgot my purse. We make a fine pair. <laughs> no, darling, I'll get my purse. You look for the car. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Saunders. I thought you'd be happy to know that I've solved our problem. But didn't I tell you I didn't want to see you again? Now, leave me alone. But I've discovered how to bring your beloved Laura back to life. I've found the perfect soul. Look, I'm warning you once and for all. I got it. Sorry to keep you waiting. Come on, honey, let's go. What's wrong? I'll explain to you later. Careful of the young lady, Mr. Saunders. Remember that soul I told you about.
that door for anyone but me. Don't worry, I won't. I'll check with you later just to make sure everything's all right. Right now, I'm going to meet with Greg and see what we can do about this madman. Don't worry. I'll try. Now that I've found the right soul, I must find the proper way to take that soul out of its body. Which method? Which one? I remember once when I was in the body of a physician, back in the days when we used to bleed people, I bled this one person too long and Unfortunately, my patient died. But it seemed like such a pleasant way to go. <laughs> In fact, I recall how enjoyable it was to watch. <laughs> oh, that's it. Bleed my next victim. Of course, I'll bleed her to death. Nice and slowly. That way, the soul will leave the body without the slightest ripple. Have you ever seen someone bleed to death, Thor? Oh, you'll like it. <laughs> now, just, just a second, Fred. With all the legal connections and personal friends you've got in the police department, you'd think there'd be something they could do. But what am I going to tell them? Go pick up this guy because he thinks Sandy's soul is perfect for my dead wife's body? <laughs> That'll go over real big. No, Greg, I gotta think of something else. Look, one thing's for sure. I just can't sit here and wait for that guy to strike again. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just what's on that legal mind of yours? What's on my mind is not legal. What? What are you up to? Look, maybe the police can't do anything about that doctor friend of ours, but, but I can. Now, come on with me. Check with Sandy to be sure she's all right. Container. And now, my dear, to ensure the fact your soul leaves that beautiful body of yours in a nice, serene manner, I'm afraid I'm going to have to bleed you to death in a nice, serene manner. Ah, my trusty old helpers. This what? No, this one. Now, now, this will be completely painless. For me, that is. <laughs> <laughs> 
Was it? <laughs> now just relax, and soon you'll feel yourself getting drowsier and drowsier. <laughs> just like going to sleep. Just like falling asleep. is here, she'll be dead. Close your eyes for the last time. I want to tell you something. Please don't feel too badly. You're much too lovely to remain dead. So I promise you, just as soon as I'm able, and as soon as I get myself a new body, I promise you, my lovely, I'll bring your body back to life again. And then, who knows? In the meantime, sleep. Sleep. But just for a little while. Exactly. Get rid of them. Thank <laughs> you. 
open the tomb. Quickly! Doctor, they, they took her out of the tomb. They buried her. Where? Where? Beyond the hill. Over in the grove. Get some shovels. Quickly! She's doing fine. Come back, darling. I've come back. I've come back.